Hello everyone and welcome back to Lost Planeswalker. You're here with me, Jesse, the Lost Planeswalker. And today we have another pre-con upgrade guide with Olivia Opulent Outlaw. This is my favorite deck that I was most looking forward to. And uh, I think that we got some great new cards and I have some really good suggestions for you to add. So without further ado, Olivia Opulent Outlaw, one red, white, black, ledger creature, vampire, assassin, flying and lifelink. Whenever one or more outlaws you control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. So an outlaw here is an assassin mercenary pirate rogue and warlock then three sack two treasure tokens put two plus one plus one counters on each creature you control activate only as a sorcery so olivia here makes treasures and then you use those treasures to buff up your entire board i think that this is a pretty good card <laughs> um you know there's so many ways to just create a huge amount of treasures so i think there's some really crazy things you can do and this could become a very powerful deck so let's start out by looking at those brand new cards we've got nine new cards including olivia but before we do that, let's look at the other co-commander of this deck to see if he's worth playing instead of olivia he's not but it's vihan gold waker red white black legend creature dwarf warlock other allies you control have vigilance and haste at the beginning of combat on your turn you may have treasures you control become three three construct assassin artifact creature tokens in addition to their other types until end of turn so he's pretty cool actually i mean this is this is no by no means a bad card it's just this deck wasn't set up to make the mass amount of treasures you want to make with him you know this makes a good amount of treasures but not enough to kind of overpower the board and all the other cards kind of care about olivia's style versus vil hands just make as many treasures as possible i would stick to olivia but let's start out by reading those first three brand new cards with angelic cell sword back in town and bounty board so angelic cell sword is four and a white creature angel mercenary flying vigilance whenever angelic cell sword or another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control create a one one red mercenary creature token then whenever it attacks if its power is six or greater draw a card this is great i think that olivia loves this card in particular as soon as i saw this card i said oh this is going in my giada deck which is the best angel commander in my opinion instantly when this enters it's probably going to be bigger than six power on its own you're going to get a ton of other creature tokens to help you block you know whatever your opponents are attacking you with flying vigilance you know it's just great so this is a really cool card i think it's going to be worth a couple bucks because i think it's actually pretty powerful back in town is x2 in a black sorcery return x target outlaw creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield yeah i mean this is what this deck was built for back in town I mean, I'm sure you can find some other decks where, you know, getting a bunch of assassins or pirates or rogues, you know, could be a killer way to just kind of end the game. So I think that this is uh, pretty great. In addition, I mean, you're basically casting them for free. You know, for four mana, you get one back. For five mana, you get two. For six mana, you get three. You know, the more you put into it, the more you're getting out of it. And very quickly, can you really outpace the amount of mana that you're casting versus the amount of stuff you get back? And bounty board, three generic artifact. Tap to add one mana of any color. One and tap, put a bounty counter on a target creature. Activate only as a sorcery. Then, whenever a creature with a bounty counter on it dies, each of its controllers, opponents, draws a card and gains two life. So, maybe you make some people happy by putting bounties on a couple stuff. I know there were some other cards in the deck that put bounties on, so very cool. Next is Charred Grave Robber, Dead Before Sunrise, in Discreet Retreat. Charred Grave Robber is two and a black creature skeleton mercenary. When Charred Grave Robber enters the battlefield, return target outlaw card from your graveyard to your hand. Then you could escape it for three black black, and Charred Grave Robber escapes with a plus one plus one counter on it. So this is a good way to recur stuff back to your hand if you need it later in the game. So I like that effect. Dead Before Sunrise is three and a red instant until end of turn. Outlaw creatures you control get plus one plus zero and gain tap. This creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature. Now, that's a cool effect. I think that this is not really being seen as one of those really powerful effects in this deck, but you turn your whole board into a, I'm just going to destroy everybody's creatures, and then all of my creatures are still around. It seems pretty powerful. And Discreet Retreat, three and a black. Enchantment Aura, Enchant Land. Enchant Land has tap, add two mana of any one color, spend this mana only to cast outlaw spells or activate abilities from outlaw sources. Whenever you cast your first outlaw, each turn, you draw a card and lose one life. This is a pretty sick, you know, land thing. It is four mana, but you're gonna draw a bunch of cards and gain a ton of life. In addition, you get to have some additional mana to cast fewer outlaws. So I think that's a great addition to this deck. And the last three cards we have is 
Grey Waters Fixer, Vilhand Gold Waker, and We Ride at Dawn. Grey Waters Fixer is two black red creature lizard mercenary. Each outlaw creature card in your graveyard has Encore X, where X is its mana value. So the way Encore works is you can cast a spell from your graveyard and you basically create a copy that attacks each of your opponents. So yeah, I mean, this could be a killer card at the end of a game. You know, you just need to overpower a couple opponents, just encore a bunch of stuff out. We already talked about Vilhan, and then we have We Ride at Dawn, two and a white enchantment, ledger creature spells you cast have Convo, which is pretty good. And whenever your commander attacks, create a 1-1 red mercenary creature token with tap, Target creature you control gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. I can see we ride at dawn in some really legendary heavy matters decks because for three mana, being able to convoke out more stuff seems really powerful. But let's look at some of the cards I think you should cut from this deck. I got nine here. I just don't think these were worth including. I think there's some better things you could do in this deck than that. Some of these are going to be a surprise because some of these are pretty good cards, but I just don't think they work particularly well here. But before we do that, I just want to say if you aren't subscribed to my channel, channel please consider doing so it would just mean the world to me and help me out you know we are probably already at 2200 you know my goal by the end of the year is to get to 3000 or more so if you would help me get there it would mean the world to me so thank you so the first three cards i think you should cut we have academy manufacturer brenna the demogorgu and captivating crew so i think everybody's gonna say why in the world would you get rid of academy manufacturer you're gonna be creating a ton of treasure tokens so you're also getting food and clue tokens i just don't think you need them i mean here's the thing if you were making food tokens and you got treasure perfect if you're making clue tokens and you got treasure and food perfect but here's the thing you're gonna be using those treasures or you should be using those treasures on olivia so you're just gonna have a board full of like those other tokens that i mean maybe they're gonna come in handy here and there but i think that this is too too big of a threat for you really to put in this deck and get you know the proper amount of value in because you're going to be spending all of those treasures buffing up your entire board or that's what you should be doing anyways so i just thought you know there were some better cards i would have liked to include in this deck that just give me more treasures or give me some better effects over academy manufacturer so maybe you guys aren't going to like that but that's what i have to say Brenna here, Legendary Creature Bird Warlock with flying. Whenever a player attacks one of your opponents, if that opponent has more life than another one of your opponents, attacking player draws a card, and you put two plus one plus one counters on a creature you control. I've played this card in decks before. It's just confusing. It's giving your opponents benefits. Um, you know, we don't necessarily need that in this deck, so I just don't really want this. And Captivating Crew, three in a red creature human pirate with three red gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery now captivating crew is a pretty cool card but in particular we want to be attacking with you know our pirates and rogues and warlocks and whatnot so unless your opponents are also playing those and that's what you're stealing i just don't see the point in including this in this deck in in addition you're going to be spending a little bit of mana to do so so captivating crew is definitely a good card and comes in handy in some spots but i think there's some better additions you could add next up we have dire fleet daredevil grenzo havoc razor and hex so dire fleet daredevil is one in a red creature human pirate with first strike when it enters the battlefield exile target instant or sorcery from opponent's graveyard you may cast that spell mana to any type can be spat cast it if that spell would be put into a graveyard this turn exile it instead yeah i mean it's good, but like I said, the main goal is not to be, you know, taking our opponent's stuff. And that's kind of the issue with the two pirates here is they want you to take their stuff and use it against them. And that's not what we're doing. We're making treasures. We're making a big board. So Dire Fleet Daredevil can go goodbye. Grinzo, Havoc Razor, Red Red, Leisure Creature, Goblin, Rogue. Whenever a creature control deals combat damage to a player, choose one. Go target creature that player controls or exile the top card of that player's library until in turn you may cast the card. And you may spend mana as or mana of any color to spend to cast that spell. Grinzo not bad either i just think there's some better things in this deck that we want to be doing um and grenzo just wasn't it and hex here is four black black destroy six target creatures i mean yeah six mana destroy six creatures pretty good uh there's just too much protection these days you know in addition you know if your opponent has six or more creatures that are really a big threat you know they probably have a lot more than that at this point so i don't think hex is going to do too much work Humble Defector, Mass Mutiny, and Painful Truths are our last three cards. And we have Humble Defector here, one in a red, Creature Human Rogue. Draw two cards, target opponent gains control of Humble Defector, activate only during your turn. Humble Defector is just going to 
you know, give your opponents a bunch of cards. You're never getting this back, you know, probably in a game. If you're the threat and you just drew a couple cards and then gave this to somebody, you're not getting this card back. So I don't really like it. Giving your opponents a lot of benefit is not really where I want to be. Mass Mutiny is three red, red sorcery. For each opponent, gain control of up to one target creature that player controls. Until end of turn, untap those creatures. They gain haste until end of turn. There's just cheaper ways to do this, and I just don't like this effect. You know, like I already said, with Captivating Crew, you know, what you want to get are outlaw cards, and unless, you know, there are outlaws, I really don't care. And Painful Truths is two in a black sorcery. Converge, you draw X cards, and you lose X life, where X is the number of colors of mana spent to cast a spell. There's already cards that guarantee you're gonna draw three, lose three. So I don't think Painful Truths is the best version of that card by any means. But now let's look at those cards I think you should add. And I think there's some really cool effects in here. But first off, we have Archpriest of Shadows, Body Launderer, and Brass's Bounty. Archpriest of Shadows has backup one, meaning you can put a plus one plus one counter on a creature, and then it gains the following abilities, which are Death Touch, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or battle, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So Olivia obviously has flying and lifelink. Now give her death touch, and then when she deals damage, you're going to get stuff back for free. I love that effect. I think that this is a really cool ability. You know, you can use it at a certain point in the game. Death touch is just really great. Or just put it on like a small thing, and somebody's like, well, I have to trade my big creature for your small thing. So just get something back instead. I think it's cool. Body launderer, two black black creature, ogre, rogue with death touch. Whenever another non-token creature you troll dies, body launderer connives. Then when it dies, return a non-rogue creature card with equal or lesser power from your graveyard to the battlefield. Unfortunately, not rogues, but there are a ton of other card types in this deck. So I think that this is very cool. And brass's bounty, six and a red sorcery for each land you control, create a treasure token. This is exactly what we want. We want more treasures. So that's why this is in this deck. So next up, we have Dothi Voidwalk. Walker, Grim Hireling, and Karizev, Skyship Raider. So, Dothi Voidwalker, Black Black Creature, Dothi Rogue. This is Shadow, which is the main reason I put it in this deck, which is interesting because it's not the main reason most people put it in the deck, but it can't be blocked, and it can't block creatures that don't have Shadow. So, basically, you're just getting in, boom, 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 hitting them, making those treasure tokens. In addition, you're exiling all of your opponent's cards, and then you can sack him, and you can cast one of those cards that you put a void counter on so this is a great addition grim hireling is three to black creature tiefling rogue whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player create two treasures so guess what if you hit three opponents you're making six treasures off of this i love that that's a full olivia activation including the treasures and mana needed to cast it in addition if you just use lands to pay the regular mana cost you can buff your board by six so i like grim hireling here then for a black sack x treasures target creature gets minus x minus x until end of turn activate only as a sorcery not a bad you know little bonus here basically if we have a really pesky creature that's got indestructible or you know we can't really mess with yeah minus one minus one counters will get there and Kari Zev, Skyship Raider, is one in a red, legendary creature, human pirate, with first strike and menace. And whenever this creature attacks, create a Ragavan, a legendary 2-1 red monkey creature token. Ragavan enters battlefield, tapped in attacking, exile token at the end of turn. This has just a bunch of great stuff. First strike, menace, it's a pirate, you know, makes another little creature token. Seems pretty good to me. And our last three cards I think you should add are Lortho, Corrupt Sheriff, Smoke Spirit's Aid, and Smothering tithe lortho corrupt sheriff is a white and a black legendary creature halfling rogue whenever a player casts their second spell each turn you lose one life and create a treasure token yeah i mean i i don't need to say anymore that's exactly what we want to do in this deck we're going to be losing a little life in the process but those treasure tokens are going to come in handy smoke spirits aid is x and a red sorcery for each of up to x target creatures create a red or enchantment token named smoke blessing attached to that creature those tokens have enchant creature and when enchanted creature dies it deals one damage to its controller and you create a treasure token perfect this is going to cost us a little bit of life in the process but making a ton of treasures for our stuff dying seems really good to me and smothering tithe is three and a white enchantment whenever an opponent draws a card that player may pay two if that player doesn't you create a treasure this is a commander staple you know it's back up to 30 dollars even though it got like reprinted four times last year which is insane but it should go in this deck and i'm you know not surprised they didn't include it but it's the first card you should include if you're upgrading it and have this already you know maybe not the first card if 
you're gonna go out and you know try and upgrade this but you know for 30 bucks it's kind of expensive but yeah this is good and with that i just want to say thank you so much for watching let me know about the cards i decided to cut and add there was a couple cards that you know i think there's going to be some people saying what are you doing taking academy manufacturer out of this deck you know how many cards you're going to be able to draw off of that you know how many you know life you're going to get to gain yeah maybe but I'd rather have a Grim Hireling over an Academy Manufacturer or a Dothy Voidwalker or Lortho or, you know, any number of the cards I added. So really, that's my mentality. And if you don't agree, please let me know. I would love to hear your opinions. You know, in addition, you know, what else do you think should go in this deck? Are there any cards that I didn't mention that you're like, oh, come on, dude, this should have gone in this deck. Let me know. I love to hear about those because, you know, I do my research and I, you know, try to do pretty thoroughly. But I love finding things that you guys, you know, suggest that I've never heard of before. In addition, if you would please, you know, leave a like, share this video with a friend and subscribe. It really does help me. You know, we all say this on YouTube because it does actually help and, you know, get us out to more people and just means the world to me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So today's Scryfall card of the day is Moon Sprite. I am that merry wanderer of the night. William Shakespeare, a midsummer night's dream. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you later, planeswalkers.